Hi everyone, uh, my name is Peyton and this is my presentation over unconscious inference. Sorry, I lost my voice over spring break, so bear with me. Um, so what is unconscious inference? Well, um, at its core, unconscious inference is the idea that we have experienced in the what we have experienced in the past dictates our present and future. Um, these influences are unconscious and we do not have to think about them, they just happen. Um, this concept particularly relates to visions, or like vision and eyesight and optical illusions. So like for example, um, whenever you see the sun glistening off the water, your brain lets you know that it's the sun reflecting off the water. As you can see like in the picture, you know that that's caused by the sun, but without unconscious inference, you would believe that the water is sparkling, but your past experiences tell you that water does not sparkle. Now, let's do a little test. Um, this picture is a very common example of unconscious inference. If you look at the dots on the left, um, do you see those as pushed in or pushed out? Most people agree that those dots look like they are pushed in, and then now look at the dots on the right. Uh, most people would agree that these dots are pushed out. Um, however, this is obviously a two-dimensional surface. Um, unconsciously, our brains quickly observe the highlights and lowlights to determine what, we th what way we think the dots are, are pushed. Um, so see how on the left, the top of the dot is darker, but on the right, the bottom of the dot is darker. Um, that is our minds making an unconscious inference. So now we're going to meet the contributors. Um, so first we have George, uh, bear with me, Friedrich Parrott. Um, and he was a physicist born in France. Um, he was the guy with the original idea of unconscious inference, but we'll get into that a little bit later. Um, and then we have Herman Van Himholtz, who was born in 1921, and he was credited with creating a connection between physiology and psychology. He had many great contributions to the field and is well known as being the founder of unconscious inference and his work regarding reaction times. So studies and observations, kind of how we got to where we are today, um, in 1839, um, Parrot, that first guy I talked about on the last slide, he um, was sitting on a train and he began to think about why um, when he was looking out the window and trees were passing by, how he could tell how fast or slow the train was moving based off of the trees. And he also was observing, you know, things in the distance and how you knew that they were at a distance because of their size. But then he kind of just um, never really, he wrote a, a small paper about it, but he never really got much more into it. And then in 1867, this is where Hemholtz comes into play, and he took this and related it back to vision and our eyesight and how we perceive what we're looking at. Um, um, he said that our vision is not complete and we use our past to fill in the rest. Um, Himmeltz was highly interested in the nervous system and was very knowledgeable in the connection between our eyesight and our perception of what we see. Um, one example that he used whenever he was first getting into this concept was that um, he said that when a person is walking towards you on the street, you know that they're coming closer to you as they get larger. We know from past experiences that humans do not double in size in such a short amount of time. So we assume that the person is walking towards us. Um, presently, the idea of our past influencing our thoughts, decisions, and actions is being studied, um, especially more in relation to race and racism and gender issues and things like that. So kind of looking at inferences today, um, on this slide, I just wanted to include some ideas on the concept unrelated to vision that are being studied. Um, studies have shown that stereotypes are largely not supported by facts and are therefore not created by past experiences for most people. And then um, 
Now, to touch on the unconscious aspect, implicit biases are, by definition, unintentional and largely unconscious. And these biases are very harmful, and researchers are working to better understand how an individual can make these biases conscious and combat their effects. Um, in the image on the right, there's a ladder of how humans make decisions, and the fourth one down is about adding our own assumptions um, and how that influences the decisions that we make. The implicit biases and stereotypes we carry influence our decision-making process in that step, which is what makes these issues so harmful in society. So kind of now back to the vision aspect. So this is kind of in relation to when our unconscious inferences don't work. Um, so what happens when we have nothing to relate an image back to? When we have no past experience with an image or what's in the image and we have nothing to compare it to. This is kind of when you see optical illusions or see things from where they're not. Like, for example, this cow. Um, it just looks like a regular cow. However, this cow's name is... Blossom and Blossom was the 2015 Guinness Book of World Record holder for being the tallest living cow. She came in at 6'4". Um, just seeing the picture of her like you saw on the last side without a scale to reference you assume she's a normal sized cow because of your past experiences they like didn't lead you to believe there was anything special about her because you didn't know who she was. Um, however, now that you see you're standing next to a woman, your mind assumes the woman is an average height and you can see that Blossom towers over her. So then, these are my references and thank you so much for listening.